Now, as we're all enjoying our summer vacations with you know blistering waves of heat, screaming matches over masks, and of course, how Russia is infiltrating our mindscape using communist telepathy, we can add going back to school on the list of concerns as well. As I've talked about before, America is facing higher rates of positive cases for SARS-CoV-2 with less financial assistance given to citizens and a new housing crisis created by the lack of empathy by our elected officials. And America is approaching the glory of becoming a failed state. But fear not, we'll still be getting the imperialist participation trophy. Big deal. It's very exciting. Okay, but despite that, the Trump administration is urging to reopen the schools in the fall when we are likely to see a second wave. The Trump administration is coming out and saying, well, well, Denmark did it. Okay, are, are you saying that America is not as good as Denmark? <laughs> yes, yes, we are. We are absolutely saying that. Okay, Denmark used logic patience, empathy, kindness to decrease the rate of cases and slowly started to reopen their, case, uh, their, their businesses and public spaces with restrictions and guidelines that people actually followed. America went from stay-at-home orders to we can try opening bars to let's rub our junks and dive bar bathrooms in a matter of hours because the flag makes us invincible. America is not better than Denmark. Okay, if, look, if Trump was really more honest, which he never will be, his slogan would have been, make America great for the first time. mag -tift. Sure, it doesn't roll off the tongue, and it would probably take a little bit more space on hats, but it's more honest. It's more honest. Now, America had COVID parties. You know what country didn't? Fucking Denmark! Or... Sweden, and they're the red-headed stepchild of the Nordic nations right now, and even they said, coughing on each other well, so with a side of Bud Light really seems like a bad idea. Look, I'm pretty sure even most orgies voluntarily canceled. Denmark can open its schools because they're taking overwhelming amounts of precautions. They're using social distancing, alternating times for kids to be dropped off and come into school, sanitizing equipment twice a day. I mean, shit, America wasn't even doing that in schools pre-pandemic. You know, American schools were just sticky and musty all the time. And, and part, of, part of that is because we're too busy funding the military and killer cops over learning about our own authoritarian history. Now, Secretary of Education Betsy DeVos has adopted the idea that schools should be reopened by the fall because how else is she going to pump moldable minds with heavy doses of nationalistic propaganda? But there is an organization that can block this health and safety violation this fall, the American Federation of Teachers, or the AFT for short. The teachers union can come together to organize and push against ethical, un unethical orders like this one. While Betsy DeVos doesn't have a plan to make schools safer or how to, how to make that shit happen during a pandemic, the AFT has put out a 22-page guideline for what we need to see in order to send American children back to school. While Betsy DeVos, she, well, she has like a leaflet about how they're just going to send kids willy-nilly into a hermetically sealed building with central air conditioning, something this virus loves more than killing elderly. The leaflet, I mean, doesn't really even mention, like, teachers or, or books. Look, I don't think Betsy DeVos understands what a school is. I, I, I kind of think she assumes that it's a substitute for, like, child prison. Now, the AFT requirements say that we need a major decline in new cases, and schools should have a resource to test, trace, and isolate new cases. I mean, I feel like this should go without saying, right? But myself and everyone at the AFT have to say this because America is having COVID parties. Uh, parties where we don't... The thing to do is cough and lick each other in like a non-sexual manner to get an infectious and deadly virus with no way to treat it. 
Look, America had a celebration for death since they couldn't celebrate 4th of July. So, yeah, we kind of need to put this shit in writing. And this is also kind of why we need, like, a better education system. The next thing the AFT addresses is deploying public health tools to prevent the spread of the virus. And yes, that means masks, gloves, and sanitizer. And look, in spaces where you can't socially distance, having a mask is crucial. Okay, ensuring that teachers have extra masks for themselves and the kids would definitely be important in this situation. And let's be honest, kids forget shit all the time. Hell, at this point in the pandemic, most of us forget to put on pants, you know, until the cashier at Aldi's points that out to us and, and then lets us go with a warning. By the way, thank you, Joseph. Your, 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 your kindness and professionalism was uh, very much appreciated. And, and uh, I, I, I will have pants uh, on next time. That's fine. Uh, but thank you, Joseph. Uh, so really, I mean, for safety's sake, we should have extra masks and also pants at these schools. I mean, just in case the parents forget something as they drop their kids off. Now, as of now, the United States government has not given masks or any protective equipment to doctors or nurses or any frontline workers. But we did spend a shit ton of money on a nationalistic display of theatrics by spelling the word heroes with fighter jets. Okay, I mean, a reallocation of those funds could have been used to get millions of people N95 masks to ensure the safety of the workers. But America isn't about safety. It's about blowing shit up and spelling things with said explosions. I mean, why did we even learn cursive if it wasn't to spell things with fire, which is the cursive of nature? Now, the AFT wants to make sure that the schools involve parents in all kinds of work. They want to make sure that the working class and the unions are accounted for. The AFD understands that parents aren't a monolith, and some parents work as frontline employees and others work from home. And this is why the teachers' union fights for a variety of social justice issues, from eliminating racism in health care, defunding the police, paid sick leave for all employees, mental health care, and many, many more things uh, You know, as, as they address this under the uh, bargaining for a common good category. Look, they see these things as, a necess as necessary elements to ensure a safe, secure, and healthy foundation to educate the next generation of American minds. And right now, the teachers' union have more power to leverage for these issues. In 2019, teachers in LA, Chicago, Colorado, and West Virginia went on strike for better pay, better treatment, and to have nurses in every school. As the president of the United Teachers of LA, Cicely Mayart Cruz points out, COVID is laying bare to every inequality in the book around BIOPOC folks. That's uh, black, indigenous, and people of color. And this is true. BIPOC folks have systematically had, had a harder time with many of the issues that I just mentioned. And there are politicians that put forth legislations to make those factors worse. Right? Former presidential candidate and senatorial cop Kamala Harris has approved arresting parents of truant kids. This creates not just a financial crisis of single and low to middle income parents to pay bail, but also increased stress. That's not a pre-existing condition. That is a manufactured one by Kamala Harris. And of course, the heightened stress causes parents to get an ulcer and they don't have days to take off and get paid because somehow it's their fault that Kamala Harris is missing the empathy section of her brain. But no one is bothered to ask why the kid didn't want to be at school and why the cops are getting involved in a matter of educational and personal affairs. The kid probably needs guidance, right? A compassion, love, and a hug. In fact, I bet if Kamala Harris was hugged more as a child, uh, she might have turned out to be like a better person. Like she might have not turned out to be Hillary Clinton 2.0. And look, nobody likes a sequel, especially sociopathic ones. 
Now in Chicago, uh, the teachers union with the entire community of parents are calling for virtual classes for the fall. CTU's Vice President Stacey Davis points out that this is a collective fight. In Wisconsin, five teachers unions have penned letters to the governor and the CDC pushing for virtual classrooms. Now, the CDC has delayed its guidelines for reopening to the end of July. That's when they're going to release it. And I suppose that's because they're doing a lot of summer reading, you know, which involves that 22 page document that the American Federation of Teachers put out before the department that is actually supposed to put out those guidelines puts one out. It's almost like the CDC is copying off the AFT. I mean, is there is there a hall monitor for government agencies? Can we get a hall monitor for government agencies? In Florida, the Florida Education Association, or FEA, has filed a lawsuit in tandem with concerned parents against Governor Ron DeSantis. DeSantis is hell-bent on opening the state schools to ensure it fulfills Trump's orders and the law that schools have to be in session for 180 days. So DeSantis is basically turning the school into a Darwinism gauntlet for a man that clearly doesn't believe in science. He sure does love using evolution as a weapon. Now, Florida has become the new North American epicenter of the global pandemic. Fucking take that, New York City. Huh? You're not so cool anymore, huh? With your f- COVID Central Park graveyard to stuff. Yeah. Florida has basically become the diseased dong of America that tries to fuck everybody without a condom while simultaneously claiming that it burns when it pees. It's the COVID party of states. And Ron DeSantis is the COVID party of governors. Now, conservative-led states are attempting to push these orders from Trump through, and the teachers' unions are fighting back, as they should. This is about the safety of not just kids and teachers, but the parents and the communities at large. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if by the end of August, we see another groundswell of strikes led by the AFT and the nation's teachers, especially considering the Trump administration's threats to defund the schools. Now, where are those very vocal opponents of defunding institutions? You know, the ones that that screamed when the defund the police movement gained momentum? What, where are those folks when they hear defund the teachers? They're sitting silent because they're indoctrinate, indoctrinated by the normalization of violence in America. Remember, we celebrate our frontline heroes not by giving them the equipment they need, but by a display of military theatrics. And just to be clear here, I saw conservatives, moderates, and liberals speak out against defunding the police, but right now I don't see any of those folks speaking out against defunding teachers. Since March, we've seen over 2,000 strikes take place in America. Corporate media and the Trump administration doesn't want to shed light on the fact that workers are pushing back against the mishandling of this pandemic. Look, if we're going to drive change and push for a more logical and compassionate society, it's going to come from supporting the labor movement and America's working class. I'm not a parent, but I do have a lot of friends that are which means that I know some pretty incredible kids that give me hope for the future. And I, for one, am not willing to risk their lives for the sake of nationalistic pride. Look, education is a commodity to be shared and not weaponized and manipulated. And a more educated populace would mean less parties where Americans try to infect each other with a deadly disease. And that's been your dispatch for this week. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you so much for tuning into it. Uh, I have got some pretty great uh, live virtual stand-up comedy shows performing in a bunch of virtual 
comedy shows. Uh, I'm, I'm going to be doing a, the Providence Fringe Festival July 30th and 31st at 6 p.m. Eastern. It's going to be live streamed on the Fringe PVD Facebook page. But if you want to be part of the live virtual audience, if you want to be part of that and have your laughter captured and make sure that I don't die on the inside by, by, by delivering jokes to, to, to nothing and nobody, um, <laughs> I would very much appreciate if you were, if, if some of you guys that want to come see the Citizen Revolution at the Fringe, uh, Providence Fringe, uh, you know, uh, make a donation and shoot me a message and I will uh, get you a link. Uh, or you can do the same thing, make a donation and get a hold of somebody at the Fringe and they will get you a link. Uh, but that's July 30th and 31st at 6 p.m. I'm also doing the No Thanks Virtual Comedy Show on August 8th at 9 p.m. Uh, that's hosted by Jimmy Calloway, who who will be uh, 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 interviewed on my podcast pretty soon. Um, and uh, that is on August 8th at 9 p.m. That's going to be $5, bucks, uh, $5 donation. Uh, and uh, the ticket link for that will be going up soon. And as usual, uh, pretty much pretty much every Friday uh, throughout, the, throughout the, the year and into the duration, uh, I'm going to be doing uh, the uh, Citizen Revolution live virtual stand-up comedy shows. Uh, each week is a new topic, new material, and each week I donate half the ticket sales to a grassroots organization. Uh, the next show is August 7th, and then August 14th, and August 28th, and then we'll be going into the fall. Uh, those dates will be announced soon. Uh, for all of that information, all of my dates, all of my albums, uh, you can uh, make donations, videos, check out all my podcasts, you can go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. Uh, and uh, I highly encourage that if you have the ability to, to become a sustaining member, you can become a sustaining member uh, in various different ways, uh, directly on my website via PayPal. Uh, you can become a, a subscriber on Bandcamp, which gets you um, new uh, unreleased stand-up comedy content. Uh, and Or you can go to Patreon, which gets you early access to shows, and uh, you get uh, unreleased comedy content, you get uh, weekly updates from me, and you get free tickets uh, all, all the sustaining members get free tickets to come to see any of these live virtual comedy shows. So that's pretty exciting. That's pretty cool. I hope you guys will consider doing that. I hope you guys will go check out the website. Uh, and uh, without any further ado, let's dive into this week's episode.